Hello, my name is Roger Watson and I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Nurse Education and Practice. That's an academic journal published by Elsevier. In this session, I want to talk to you about some important guidelines for reporting research. I'll, I'll finish off with the final section of the paper, which again is broad, and that's the discussion. And the discussion section will also include other subsections like limitations, implications, uh, future research and, of course, a conclusion. Now, people find discussions difficult to write, and I always advise uh, that the discussion should be written as follows. Start off by saying, this study set out to investigate, uh, alleviate, or, or, or uh, you know, whatever, whatever you set out to do. Restate the aims of the study, and then say, this study found, and give the main findings, maybe three or four of them, possibly under bullet points. Now those bullet points should provide the headings for the discussion under which you discuss the actual uh, findings in the light of the literature that you refer to at, at the beginning. So that's a good way both to begin a discussion and to give it structure and to make sure that it's flowing logically from the beginning to the end. So I hope from what I've said so far that you've seen that a, an overall a research report in, a, in an academic manuscript has an overall structure, it has a direction, and each of those sections within it also has a direction. And that direction can best be achieved by using headings and subheadings. However, you do have to make sure that the appropriate material goes under the appropriate headings. So what I want to look at now uh, before I conclude on some more detailed aspects of writing is the results section, because this is the one where you really can uh, attempt uh, to save some space and, and, and achieve some space savings. I would always advise with results sections simply to write the results. Don't reflect on them. Don't say this is an interesting finding. Don't compare and contrast. Leave that for the discussion. So one way to make your results succinct and clear is to report exactly and only what you found. Try to put as much material as you can into tables. And if you're in any doubt about how to present tables, then have a look at the journal. Have a look at how other people have done it and copy that method. That's not plagiarism, that's just common sense. So look at how it's already been done. Uh, what you're reporting will not be all that unique. It's unlikely that nobody's reported that before. See how other people have done it. So the tables, like the overall paper, and particularly the whole results section, should be as parsimonious as possible. There should be as much information there in as little space as possible. Another uh, way of uh, conveying more information, or at least of getting more information across, is to supplement material. If you feel it has to be available to the readers, then supplement it either by a link that the journal may provide, and if the journal doesn't provide a link, then you can provide the material on, for example, the university repository and provide your own link to that. So that's another way uh, you can get around the problem of space in the results section. 